Okay, great. So, hello everyone. Thank you for being here. So, my name is Estefania Alban. I'm from Universidad de la República in Uruguay. And I'm going to present a paper entitled Why Has Technological Change Not Close the Gender Wage Gap? Uh, I want to thank also UN Wider and the International Economic Association for the opportunity of presenting this. So, driven by technological advances, labor market in high income countries have experienced relevant structural changes. One of the most documented consequences is the relocation of employment from routine work to non-routine tasks, that is to these uh, jobs in which technology complements work. A phenomenon that has been called routine bias technological change. So this has led to a growing literature investigating the effects of technological change on inequality and the extent to which labor markets are increasingly polarized. However, we still know little about the effects of technological change on gender inequality. Uh, and although these structural changes are in principle gender neutral, they may result in gender bias impacts if men and women have different employment distribution across occupations that were differently affected by technological change. And therefore, this might have had relevant implications for the dynamics of the gender wage disparities. So this paper addresses the question of how have changes in wages and employment structure across occupations associated with the technological progress affected the gender wage cap. So with the advancement of technology, the occupations that lost the most in terms of employment and wage returns are those traditional male industrial occupations which have a high content of routine tasks. So by looking at the employment structure, recent work suggests that women have relatively benefit from technological change and that they are now more likely to be employed at cognitive high wage occupations. Despite this, the convergence in the gender wage gap stagnated in the last decades in most of uh, developed countries has shown by extensive literature, putting in question the extent to which the impact of technological change on occupational wages has been favorable to female workers. So this paper comes to reconcile in some way these two uh, pieces of evidence by investigating why is it that the large wage gains that are observed in those occupations in which women are increasingly employed in detriment of traditional male industrial occupations have not led to a further reduction in the gender wage gap. So to answer this question, this paper uses administrative panel data for Germany uh, and investigate the effect of technological change on wage trajectories for men and uh, women across occupations that were differently affected by technological change. Um, the German labor market offers an interesting case to study this question, first because it has one of the highest and most persistent gender gaps among developed countries, and also having a large industrial sector, the effect of technological change on the employment structure has been uh, remarkable as shown by previous work. So what I do, I first estimate changes over time in the occupation specific wage premiums. These are defined as the component of the worker's potential wage that is common to all workers in a given occupation in a year after accounting for the effect of endogenous selection of uh, workers in, uh, um, of after accounting for the effect of occupation-specific return to individual skills, and for that I use the panel data approach of Cortes, which uh, corrects for the endogenous selections of workers into occupations. Uh, I consider five broad occupation groups, distinguishing between tasks that uh, can be automated and tasks that require analyzing or interacting with others, and where often technology complements work. And then I analyze how those changes in the wage premiums for male and female workers affect the gender wage gap, distinguishing between a composition or sorting channel, that is the gender differences in employment distributions, and the gender differences that take place within occupations. So, uh, well, this uh, paper contributes to uh, an extensive literature on the causes of the gender inequalities in the labor market. And uh, although the women have been upgrading their occupations, the occupational structure is still a relevant factor in explaining the gender gaps. And in particular, there is a literature that focuses on the effect of technological change uh, on gender gaps, and it does it by looking on the employment structure that is investigating to what extent women's jobs are more or less subject to automation compared to those of males. 
uh, for example, Negei and Petrongolo and Serina and co-authors find that the relocation of labors from good producing sectors to service industry favored women by creating jobs that are less physically demanding and more intense in interactive skills. Also, by looking at the task content of jobs, some recent literature find that there was a rise in the use of interpersonal tasks in the US and that women have a comparative advantage in those increasingly value skills. Uh, my paper is particularly related with uh, Black and Spitzoener, which also focus on West Germany, and they find that women have witnessed increases in non-routine analytical and interactive uh, tasks within industry and occupation cells, which they interpret as a positive effect of uh, technological change on uh, women's job. Uh, in this paper, by looking not only at the employment, but mostly at the wage dynamics across occupations, I contribute to this literature, finding that although the uh, occupational uh, structure has favored women, uh, wage premiums for male workers grew more rapidly than those of females within the analytical and interactive non-routine occupation. And this explains why, although women have been less exposed to the automation of work and increased their employment in this uh, highly value uh, skills, uh, occupations, uh, this did not lead to a further reduction in the gender wage gap. So my paper uses uh, the administrative social security records for Germany. This is a sample of integrated labor market biographies, which is a 2% random sample of all mandatory notifications made by employers to social security agencies. Um, my sample is composed of male and female workers aged between uh, 25 and 55 years old in West Germany for the period 1975 to 2010. Because there is no clear information on hours worked, I restrict my main analysis to full-time workers so that wages are comparable, although I do some uh, robustness also with the uh, part-time. And then I combine this data with the information on tasks coming from a representative labor force cross-section, uh, each covering around 30,000 individuals. And from this information, what I use is the worker self-reports on the task contents of their work. The tasks are the activities that workers uh, have to perform normally during their jobs. Uh, I consider a classification of five dimensions based on the task content of occupations, uh, based on the, the one that is developed by Spitzwener. And uh, basically there are five categories. The first is the analytical non-routine, uh, which includes activities such as research and analyzing. The second one, interactive non-routine, activities that require interacting with other people, such as managing or teaching. These are high-skill, high-pay occupations. Then we have cognitive routine, activities such as calculating, bookkeeping. Uh, manual routine, these are typical industrial occupations, these are like medium grade occupations, and finally we have the manual non-routine, which are basically non-skill service and repairing. So I use uh, this information on tasks from the qualification and career survey, and then aggregate it at the 3D sheet occupational uh, level to classify my occupations in the administrative data. So following previous literature, I interpret changes along these task groups as being related to routine bias technological change. So here are some descriptives for my sample. Here, the only thing I want to, to highlight is that um, so, okay, I'm not sure here. So, uh, that uh, men are mostly employed in the manual routine uh, group, while women are mostly employed in the interactive non routine. And then, if we go to the high skill uh, jobs, uh, men are more represented in the analytical non routine, while women in the interactive. So, uh, here are the changes in employment shares by occupation groups. And uh, what we can see is that in line with the routine bias technological hypothesis, there was a strong decrease in the manual routine groups for both men and women of around 15%. For men, this uh, decline was, was compensated by increases in both extreme of the wage distribution, manual non-routine and analytical non-routine. And for women workers, there was a strong increase in the interactive non-routine gr uh, group. So, uh, to estimate the occupational wage premiums, I follow the panel data approach of Cortes uh, 2016, assuming that uh, productivity is log linear in skills, the potential wage in occupation J for individual I of scale level set uh, can be defined as a wage premium occupation component that is common to all workers in occupation J at time T. 
and a, a component that interacts the individual skills and the return, occupation specific return to those skills. Uh, in principle, I will assume that these uh, skills are time invariant, so we can uh, call this second component gamma, which is an occupation spell fix effect, which varies for an individual across occupations, but it stands contents whenever the individual stays in the same occupation. So empirically, the observer wage depends uh, in which occupation the individual uh, is selected. So there's a dummy that takes value one if the individual selects it into one of these five broad occupation groups. Um, and the regression also includes uh, year fixed effects and controls uh, the place of work at the fair state, experience where the individual is chairman or foreigner. The identifying assumption is that selection into occupations only depends on the occupation wage premiums and the individual's worker's ability. That is, the individuals will try to select in the occupation which they can have the higher returns given these uh, two factors. So, um, so Curtis developed uh, this uh, empirical approach to analyze the effect of technological change for a sample of male workers in the US. But as I want to uh, analyze the gender effects of technological change, I allow occupation wage premium to differ by gender. So I do this by introducing an interaction term with, with the occupation fixed effects and uh, uh, a dummy for female occupation time fixed effects and uh, anatomy for female. So I estimate these uh, thetas with our, uh, which can be interpreted as the uh, wage premium for male and uh, female workers. Because of the inclusion of the occupation spell fixed effect, the occupation time fixed effects are identifying only from variation uh, over time within occupation spells. So this should be interpreted as a double difference. That is, they identify the changes over time in the occupational wage premiums relative to uh, the manual non-routine, which is the omitted category in the, uh, in the, in the regression, the manual non-routine for male. So then I want to explain how these uh, changes in the wage premiums contribute to the gender wage gap. Uh, I um, consider the employment distribution uh, across these five occupation groups. And uh, there are uh, two complementary channels which can explain how the changes in the occupation specific uh, wage premiums affect the gender wage gap. The first one is the composition or sorting across occupation that takes place if women are less likely to be employed at uh, those occupations that most increase the gender uh, wage premiums, the, the, um, the wage premiums. Then the second one is the within occupation differences that take place if women obtain a smaller increase in those occupation premiums than men for the same occupation group. So I follow the approach of uh, Card and co-authors who did something very similar to uh, the composers um, uh, firm premiums. So I adapt this to uh, the composer changes in the occupation premiums uh, using this uh, Oaxaca Glinder style decomposition. So the first term is the within occupation, which considers the uh, differences in the estimated coefficient considering either the, fa the male or female distribution. And then uh, the gender, the, so the second term is the sorting across occupations, which considers um, the, the differences in the distribution taking either the female or male coefficients. So here the results, this is uh, considering uh, um, the estimating for a sample of male and female or together, so uh, no gender differences in the coefficients. And we can see that uh, in line with the robustness by, uh, with the technology uh, spectral um, Technology, so we can see that there's a, a strong decrease in the manual routine occupations and uh, an increase in the uh, cognitive, especially in the analytical non-routine and in the interactive non-routine. So the manual non-routine is the the omitted category. So all of them, all of these, are with respect to the manual non-routine. And here are the results when estimating gender-specific occupational premiums. So what we can see, again, these are, are all with respect to, to, manu to manual and routine for men. And what we can see is that uh, there is uh, a, a much strong dispersion in the changes in occupation premiums for male. Uh, there is a strong increase in the, in the 
cognitive uh, groups, the analytical non-routing and the interactive non-routing, while uh, for women there, there's an string, uh, an increase in the analytical non-routing, which is much uh, lower compared to, to th that of men. And uh, these uh, two occupations, which are like the ones that employ most of the women, evolve very similar to the manual non-routing for men, which is the omitted. Um, so then I go to see how these uh, changes in the, in the wage premiums affect the gaps uh, considering the, the employment distribution. And uh, what we can see is that if we take the mix by gender occupation premiums, this will have been uh, like favored to women. But when we consider the gender specific occupational wage premiums, the variation for uh, females is negative while for males is positive, leading to uh, 40% of uh, variance. So, so uh, if uh, men and women uh, receive the same uh, variation in the occupation premiums, then the gender wage gap will have decreased by 40% instead of the 20%, uh, 21% that we observed. Uh, then the, compos the composing the, the wage premiums gap between the two channels, we can see that uh, the fact that occupational wage premium for men grew more rapidly than female premiums with certain occupation groups is the main explanatory factor of the average gender differences over time. And uh, the sorting across occupations, in fact, contributes to decrease the, the wage uh, gaps. So I think I'm going to skip the cohort analysis and the robustness checks. I'm going to conclude. So uh, this paper uses administrative panel data for Germany to investigate the effect of technological change on the dynamics of the gender wage differentials. Uh, the effect of uh, gender differences in sorting across occupations has mostly benefit women, uh, contributing to narrow the gender wage gap. However, what I find is that wage gains for male workers within cognitive occupations grew more rapidly than those of females. And this effect is even stronger for younger cohort of workers. So uh, we should not expect that this effect is uh, dec will be decreased like in near future. Uh, so one possible lesson from the paper is that it can be misleading looking only at the show of uh, automation exposure. Uh, although lower exposition to the automation of work and occupational upgrading, women still face certain constraint that did not allow them to benefit from the increased overall wage returns in the upper part of the skill distribution. So uh, policies aimed at reducing gender gaps are still uh, very relevant and uh, we should not expect that uh, a structural change by itself is going to decrease uh, these differences. So yeah, we can finish here and have some more time for questions.